Um, just really quickly, if someone could say in the comment section or not, you can hear me or not, that would be really helpful. Uh, we're going to get it. Okay, awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, cool. So thanks for joining us today for our webinar about uh, creating your best pitch video. Um, my name is Aditi. I am here from Indiegogo. And with us today, we have Hope, who is uh, from Lemon Light Studios. And they are uh, an incredible asset. And they're here to help you guys out with creating your best pitch video. Um, so there's a few different reasons that we're actually hosting this webinar today. Um, one is to like kind of give you guys some 101 content on what exactly goes into creating a good webinar. But a lot of it is to also um, educate you guys and to better equip you with the knowledge and the language that you will need in order to do more research or maybe even work with an agency like Hopes. Um, and so, you know, whatever questions you have during the webinar, if you want to go ahead and type them out in uh, the little comment box that you guys are chatting in right now, um, we can go ahead and answer questions as we go. And if there's some time at the end, we'll also host uh, a Q&A section, um, which I think will be helpful. As a heads up, we will be sending out this recording to everyone. So um, no worries. You will have this in your inbox uh, within the next 24 hours or so. We will also be sending out examples of um, whichever examples that we use throughout the webinar. So if you guys, for some reason, can't hear or you're having any technical difficulties, you can also just watch these on your own time. Um, so let's go ahead and get started um, since we've got about an hour to go. So um, first things first, what is Indiegogo? I'm sure a lot of you guys are already pretty well aware of what Indiegogo and crowdfunding is, but I think it's really important to kind of start off with our mission since we're a very mission-driven company. Um, so we empower people to unite around ideas that matter to them and together make those ideas come to life. And a lot of that um, internally means that we just like to empower you guys to ensure that you have your best chance of success, um, which is kind of why we started this webinar program. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Hope really quickly, and she's going to tell you guys what Lemon Light is. Hey guys, so nice to meet all of you. My name is Hope, and I'm the CEO at Lemon Light. And Lemon Light is a video production company that offers high quality, affordable video content nationwide. We've worked with dozens of crowdfunding campaigns, and some notable Indiegogo clients include Kudrone, Plug, Ido, and many more. Today, we're going to focus on the three big questions related to video for your crowdfunding campaign. That includes budgets, how to create your script, and ultimately, how to use your videos for advertising purposes as well. One of the first big questions we always get is, how much does a crowdfunding video cost? There's a common misconception that spending more money on your video will directly correlate to the amount of funds you raise. But that's not always true. To explain this, it's important to understand the concept of production value. Production value is an industry term used to refer to lighting, sound, props, art directions, and more, all used to improve the video. So yes, it's true that if you're filming a scene with a horse, spending money on a real horse may look much better on camera than a stuffed horse. In that sense, investing in your video is very important. The problem is that different companies charge different amounts for the exact same video or excuse me, for the exact same horse. Traditionally, video production has always been very expensive, but with the rise of technology, the costs have decreased. Some companies pass that savings on to their customers, while others don't. So it's for this reason that it's important to look beyond just the price tag. Let's start with the different types of videos. So one of the first things you want to consider is which kind of video is going to be best for your brand. Each of these videos prices vary, so having an idea will help kind of get you started in the right direction. Let's go through each one. Mini doc documentary. Mini doc videos usually cost between $2,000 and $4,000. These videos are often shot at your location, and they feature you, you and your team sharing your story. It features the elements that are naturally happening at your business, and the story is heavily crafted in post-production. In this case, you become the assets that make up the production value, therefore saving you some money. These kinds of videos are typically best for brick and mortar businesses, services, creative works, or community projects. Let's watch an example here. Nope. Sorry, guys. One second. Yep. 
You know what? Here we go. Some of the most fun the rides, most fun I've, rides ever I've ever had have been at night in the winter time. Roads that you've ridden a hundred times become new. It's really quiet in the winter months riding. There's far fewer cars, the leaves are off the trees. Winter conditions need winter clothing. I mean, basically, there's no bad weather, there's just bad clothing. When you ride during the winter, the changes in temperature. Hey, Didi, I'm having a time refining the, the PowerPoint. But while we go through that, so yeah, Brumble Bikes is great. Oh, perfect. There we go. Thanks so much. So Brumble Bikes is a great example of how a mini documentary video works. So as you saw in the video, we saw the owner of the company at his location showing the bikes and ultimately the clothing that he was raising for. So we didn't have to create any of that stuff from scratch. It was all available to us, which helped him create a really beautiful, complete story using assets they already had. Next is a lifestyle video. So lifestyle videos usually start around $5,000 and can be as expensive as $20,000. These videos include extensive pre-production where the story is completely narrated on the front side. It includes hired actors, rented locations, art directions, and more to bring your product or service life. These are typically more expensive because all of these elements have to be purchased or rented. These videos are typically best for products, techs, excuse me, product, tech apps, platforms, also great for fashion. Let's watch an example video here. This is the Ku Drone Mini Drone. It's a unique palm-sized quadcopter that captures crisp 4K image, HD 1080p, and panoramic photos. And what's more, the Ku Drone pilots conveniently and effortlessly through your smartphone. With GPS and vision positioning, it will follow you wherever you go. At only three ounces, its compact and lightweight design allows you to take it with you anywhere. You can even set the Ku Drone to follow you and track you. All right, guys, so that's a great example of a lifestyle video. So in my case, those people were hired actors and we had them come to a location on the beach where we basically staged all of that. It created a really great example video for Kudrome because they were able to really showcase their product in the best light, but everything was brought together on the front side and ultimately crafted specifically for this video. All right, next. Let's look at an animation example. Animated videos typically cost between $3,000 and $5,000. These videos do not feature any live action footage, which includes real people or places. It's basically a cartoon that's fully crafted in pre-production and then carefully executed in post-production. Animated videos are always best for really complex products or services. So let's watch a quick example of an animated video. Creating and managing Create. custom inventories has never been easier. Forget about old clipboards and paper. Blue Cart's inventory management works online and natively through your mobile phone, keeping management looped in live, anytime, anywhere. Manage par levels and quickly build vendor orders on the fly based on on-hand values. Not taking inventory all at once? No problem. You can save inventory drafts and come back to them whenever you need to. View inventory history. All right, guys. So that's a little snippet of an animated video. And just really quick, I keep seeing that there is, I guess, a drone photo or something showing up. I'm not seeing that on my end. Um, so let me know if that continues to, to show up and maybe I can try and find a way to get rid of that. <clears throat> so again, these are the three different types of videos that are usually used in crowdfunding. And each of them is a little different. Each has a different reason 
that makes sense for different products or services. And then each has a slightly different price point. So when you start thinking about the video, the style of video is a great place to start. With that, I'll turn it over to Aditi to talk about ways to save money and maybe where to spend a little extra money. Hi guys, um, sorry for any technical difficulties we're having here. Um, and thank you so much everyone for bearing with us. Um, just again, as a reminder for everyone that's joining us a little bit late, we will be sending out these videos so you can watch them on your own time. We don't wanna you know, bore you guys and show you the entire thing. So we're just showing little clips of it so you can get an idea of generally what we're talking about. Um, but to come back to the presentation really quickly, um, you wanna avoid extremes. What this means is you have to do your homework ahead of time. Um, there was some talk in the comment section I noticed about um, how to have a free video and how you can create one. Um, while you can create a video on a budget, free would be a bit of a stretch. Um, and we really don't suggest you know, having a video that costs as, as little as $0 or even $500 or even something on the other end of the spectrum around $50,000. You want to have something that's somewhere in between and that fits whatever budget you have. Um, and so we're going to do our best to teach you guys different tactics on how you can save money here and there. Um, but you know, you want to make sure to find a lot of example videos uh, prior to. So what we're doing here, like sharing um, videos that we think have worked really well, this is one way to get a good idea of what it is that you'll need for your video. Um, but if you're working with a production company, ask them for work that they've done in the past so you can get a really good idea um, of what it is working with and ask to talk to their uh, previous clients so you can also see what it's like to work with them. You want to make sure that if you're actually shelling out any money, uh, you're, you're getting deal for what you're what you're spending on. So, um, for everyone here who'd like to save a little bit of money, which of course is everyone, um, we do have some tips on how you can save and things that you might be able to kind of cut out um, and things that you can keep in the video. So one thing I think is really important is you can shoot in one location on one day instead of skipping around and having your production go uh, and stretch out for, for an entire week. So if you have just a home that has a lot of different dynamic elements, perhaps you have a backyard, perhaps you have your home itself, um, that also really helps. So production, as it says here, charges by the hour. And so if you can condense it, it's going to cost you a lot less money. Um, Pixie lighting over here is a really good example. Their entire video was shot in, in one home. So we'll send that example out afterwards um, and you can take a look at that. Um, the other thing is, can you provide a place to shoot? So if you uh, provide a location yourself, um, like in the case of Pixie or in Bed of Nail, which is an example we're gonna watch a little later, um, if you can provide that location, then you just don't have to pay anyone you know, $10,000 for a hall or for a backyard um, or, or any use they have. Um, providing the cast is another way that you can cut corners. Um, Hope is gonna step in a little later and provide a caveat to this. If you can provide a cast, if your um, team is going to be on camera, why not bring them in? I think it adds an element of um, reality. It also adds like this level of authenticity, which is kind of nice. Um, this Frenchie Speed backpack is a really good example of this. Um, this is a still from their video where one of their engineers played an engineer on camera. Um, it's a little bit awkward, but it's also kind of a little bit funny. So if you can, you know, if you have someone that's willing to be on camera, go ahead and use them. Um, the other important thing is, you know, kind of trimming down your features. So your product might have 20 to 30 different things that it does, but you really need to sit down and think, what is the most important thing? What is the thing that's going to resonate most with my audience? So if you have those 20 features, can you cut it down to just four or five important ones um, that you think people will actually be interested in, in learning more? The great thing about crowdfunding is your pitch video is only part of the actual pitch. You also have the entire pitch section, so you can create, um, you know, that you can add on the extra features there. Um, the other thing is, can you shorten the video? The shorter the video, the less expensive it's going to be in post, um, and and you won't have to spend quite so much money. Um, this is a really important point right here. Most people do not watch beyond two minutes. This is extremely important. Please remember this. Uh, a five minute video, you might think you need something like five minutes to get across all of the bells and whistles of whatever it is that you're, you're talking about in your video, but I think what you'll find is that no one watches beyond the first two minutes of it. You don't want to spend the first 30 to 40 seconds like these beautiful panoramic shots that have really nothing to do with your product or maybe just setting a scene. Um, you know, just save that for like your film thesis or something. This is really, you're trying to get to the point as fast as possible. Uh, so that two minutes is really key. 
Um, you know, before you go ahead and uh, share your feedback or edits, you want to make sure to review. So keeping the edits to a minimum, um, if you've hired someone on, it, it's going to mean that you don't have to go back and forth, you don't have to use their time, um, and you're using your time wisely instead of, you know, having this stretch on for like two or three weeks. Um, and the most expensive thing you can do is canceling everything at the last minute. So make sure everyone is really prepared for what's going into this. Um, this is why sometimes it can be really helpful to work with an agency because they have a, a better idea of how to plan for these sorts of things. But if you're doing it yourself, if you're just you know pulling on your bootstraps and, and doing this yourself, make sure you're planning ahead, that you've got the run of show taken care of well ahead of time so that way the day runs really smoothly. Um, previously shot footage is something that can be used. So it doesn't have to be stuff that you um, that you use you know, the day of that you filmed. You can also, if you've done any filming prior to, um, something that you think will last, um, it's also helpful to create that in that moment. Hope is going to step in uh, with the, that PSA that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, so I just wanted to take a second to share something really important. All of the ways that Aditi shared are incredible ways to save money and they can absolutely help. We work with clients and we do these things every single day. But one of the most important things to do is to set the right expectations for your friends and family if they're going to be on set. Filming usually takes somewhere between four to six, sometimes even eight hours. And your friends and family are going to spend a lot of time waiting for lights to be set up, cameras to be moved, um, a lot of just kind of hanging out and with not much to do. And they'll also have to refilm the scene sometimes more than once. So it's not quite as glamorous as it looks in Hollywood. The day can be a really can be really long and your friends can be stuck kind of doing the same thing over and over again. So while they can be a great asset, it's just really important to make sure they're well prepared so that they don't get bored or annoyed and that they don't want to leave early because at the end of the day, they'll definitely need will definitely need them there if they're supposed to be there and we'll want them happy and excited to help as well. So just one important thing to keep in mind. Um, thank you, Hope, for that. Um, so one add-on that I think is really valuable if you do have a little extra cash lying around is uh, creating a testimonial video. Um, a testimonial video is basically just 15 to 30 seconds where people talk about um, what the product does and their experience with it. Um, something to keep in mind with crowdfunding is unlike traditional e-commerce, there's not a review section. So with Amazon, Traditional behavior dictates basically that you look at the product, but then you scroll up at the very bottom, you see what other people are saying about it. Does this product actually function the way it claims that it does? We don't have that luxury with something like crowdfunding, and having a testimonial video or something along those lines really kind of adds that same sense of social proof. Um, so the example that we're using here is a little bit racy. So um, Indiegogo is an open platform, um, and we do have some adult products uh, on Indiegogo, and so what that means is it can be really tricky to talk about um, products that maybe are a little bit crass if you go into too much detail. Um, the Eva campaign actually did a really good job about talking about their product without actually talking about what it did by talking about um, how it fit into other people's lives. And so they talked about how it changed their lives and it changed their relationship with their partner. Um, and that really kind of circumvented any awkwardness that people might have felt about it. So um, that's one thing to think about. You don't necessarily have to be an adult product to do it. Um, I just think that's a really extreme example because it is kind of a hard product to sell. Um, so if you have extra money uh, and you, you, know, you don't want to do any of these things, consider adding some of these elements. Um, so these are three examples. Uh, 2D and 3D graphics is the example that we're seeing here. So Alien Earbuds um, uh, was just like an earbud company that's really interesting and cool and it's live. And it's live right now, it's live right now, live right now. A little graphic overlay that shows, oh, this is the graphing enhanced audio. This makes it really easy when you're just kind of watching the video, maybe on your phone, on your commute or something, and you don't necessarily have uh, the volume up really high. You can kind of watch it uh, with like half of a brain and still absorb what's going on. So that sort of thing is really helpful for that. Um, drone footage is also really nice. It gives this like wide panoramic shot, um, and those are all really exciting to see. Uh, and wardrobe, of course, is a good one. Um, you know, anything you can do to really set the scene and make it seem more interesting is a good idea. Um, some more things you can add are hair and makeup. Uh, instead of having your team do it yourself or, or something like that, maybe you can hire someone professional to make everyone look their best. Uh, some, you know, cameras these days are, are pretty high quality, so if you can avoid seeing people's close-up pores, I would suggest it. Uh, having multiple locations is really nice. We mentioned earlier you can save money by just 
filming in your home, but having a lot of locations really makes it dynamic and interesting. Um, and so JMGO is actually an example of this. They were uh, they did a few different you know set designs and, and locations, which was pretty cool. Um, and set design is another. Um, so something I think is really important, especially if you are a kitchen um, uh, product or if you are somehow related to food, is a food stylist. Um, if you can bring in someone to make the food look really appealing, um, this is just going to make it more you know Instagrammable or make it seem more lifestyle content, which is always really nice. Um, bloopers reels, people always find that to be a little bit amusing. It makes you seem kind of like a real company. Uh, sorry, not a real company, a, a real group of people. Um, especially with crowdfunding, it's really nice to have that sense of um, like personal personalization. People like knowing that you're just real people who are creating a cool thing. And the bloopers reel really kind of adds to that sense. Um, and the example that we see here is this final one, which is various cuts and styles. Um, and this is actually the Dash Cold Brew campaign, and this wasn't their main video. Um, this is the video that they used for things like Facebook advertising and um, different things like that. And so they just had text overlay, just in case people were watching but not actually listening. Um, and it just kind of told you everything. And this is the sort of content that people create in order to be a little bit more viral. And so they had like quick engaging cuts, um, and it just kind of showed exactly what they were doing. Um, so I'm going to hand it back over to Hope, and she's going to talk to you guys a little bit about how you can go about creating your script. Awesome. Thanks, Aditi. So now that you know what kind of video might be best for your brand, let's talk about the script itself. As Aditi shared, most people won't watch more than roughly two minutes of your video. So it's important that your script is the correct length. The rule of thumb is about two words per second. So if your video is one minute, your video, your, excuse me, if your video was one minute, your script should be about 120 words. While every video is unique, everything that's included in a video should be sort of similar. So each video should, should include an opening, a problem, a solution, your secret X factor, some information about your team, and a clear call to action. These elements can be in a different order, especially if you want to highlight one more than the other, but you want to make sure to address each of them. We'll talk about each of them in more detail. The opening is definitely one of the most important parts of your video because you only have one chance to capture your audience's attention. One of the ways that we recommend doing this is by using an emotional hook, something that immediately creates a feeling inside of them that makes them want to know what's going to happen next. You can also use a surprising fact or a relatable story. Anything that you can do to capture their attention and continue having them watch your video so that you can get to the whole meat of your story. Why should anyone even care about what you're selling? There are usually, there's usually a lot of competition in your space, so I always encourage people to use this to your advantage. Highlight the challenges that most people are having with your competitors' products so they can relate to what you're solving. There's a good chance if they're looking at your products, they've probably seen something similar or they know about a similar product, which is why they're looking for a solution to start with. So by highlighting some of the popular challenges, it gives you an opportunity to really highlight your solution. So your solution is, of course, the benefits of your product or service with, with supporting features. So how is your product different? How will your product solve that problem that you just outlined? In this section, we really encourage people to focus on the benefits and not just the features. A feature is something that your product can do, while a benefit illum illuminates how this feature can enhance their life. So an example of this would be if I have a new dog leash that tracks when my dog is taken on a walk by using a flashing light. In the video, I want to focus on how this feature saves me time from you know, being concerned about whether my dog needs to go out or when the last time he went out was. and Focus on the benefits of that and not necessarily the flashing lights themselves. You can always show the features, but really people are inspired by how it's going to help them live better or make their life easier. The secret sauce. So again, if the market's filled with competitors, you want to make sure your video really stands out by drawing attention to your X factor. So in addition to the benefits and features, what makes your product so unique and uh, your offering so tangible for them. This is your chance to really shine and show the world what you're offering. So the Kudrona video that we sort of started watching a little bit ago and then we can watch again, 
Um, their X factor, the really great bit about them was how small and tiny and compact their drone was. Most people didn't even believe it was a possibility until Crew Drone actually showed their product. We even used their product um, and really made that a, a something to believe in. Next is the team. So this is something to remember. Some people have had negative experiences with crowdfunding and have received their products late or even never at all. It's important to showcase your team and show why your team is the team to deliver on time and according to all of your promises. Usually we recommend including some founder interviews or um, customer testimonials, either like Aditi said earlier, outside in separate videos throughout your campaign or even within the video itself. This is a great way to really highlight the team. And then lastly is the call to action. So don't be afraid to ask for what you want. You want to be really clear and concise and let them know, let your audience know exactly how you'll be using these funds and how they'll benefit from it. Be direct and be honest. I saw someone earlier posted about being authentic in your video, and that's absolutely true. Crowdfunding videos especially are a great place to really show your authenticity and show why you started your product, what you're going to do next, and how they can benefit from what you're creating. I think it's really important. Let's watch the Kudron video in full so you can see how we, their video does touch on each of these points. If I can find it. Here we go. This is the Ku Drone Mini Drone. It's a unique palm-sized quadcopter that captures crisp 4K image, HD 1080p, and panoramic photos. And what's more, the Ku Drone pilots conveniently and effortlessly through your smartphone. With GPS and vision positioning, it will follow you wherever you go. At only three ounces, its compact and lightweight design allows you to take it with you anywhere. You can even set the Ku Drone to follow you and track you, so you can capture that perfect ride. Infrared and sonar sensors let you fly, even indoors. Kudro's advanced 4K camera, positioning system, and internal balancing technology combine for precision hovering. Get that perfect shot, video, or selfie every time. Take it up a notch with a 360 spin for aerial panorama photos. And the live stream technology allows for instant sharing. The Kudrone Mini Drone. Power, precision, performance. Oh, it looks like we uh, lost our presentation really quick. I'm so sorry, guys. Give us a quick second as we're having some issues. But uh, here we go. Sorry about that. Um, awesome. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. We are back. So yeah, that, that was a really good example, I think, of um, that all of those points that Hope mentioned, you can kind of see how they tied uh, that general outline is talking about into um, the, the video. Um, like we mentioned, we are going to be sending these examples out to everyone afterwards. Um, and so you can take a, take a look and, and maybe dissect it a little more on your own time um, once you've got all these points written down. Um, but as you're writing your own script, which a lot of you I'm sure will be doing, um, and even if you're working with an agency, I think it's really important to kind of get started thinking about some of these points. Um, we wanted to share a list of uh, questions that you can really start with. And like we mentioned, we are sending this out to everyone afterwards, so don't feel like you need to write them all down. Um, but you can kind of just start with these. And so um, I don't want to read them out to you, uh, but generally, you know, it's just sitting down and really brainstorming, like, what exactly is your mission internally? What is it that you're really solving for? And how are you actually going about doing that? Um, what are important things that you really need your audience to know? Just sitting down, brainstorming, um, and working with these, uh, these ideas is really important. Um, so in order to actually turn this into a script, because you're going to end up with, like, a lot of raw data here, uh, first, of course, you want to write out the answers. Um, once you've done that, just go ahead and like free write for a little while and then start bolding the things that you seem that you that you're finding are popping up over and over again or the things that you think are really important to your brand. 
Uh, you can actually use some of these phrases in the script itself. And even if you don't use it in the video, it'll be useful in the pitch. Um, we just as a side note, we have um, a previous webinar on how to create your best pitch. It's something that's available in the Education Center. Feel free to give that a watch if you're interested in that. Um, but yeah, it, it's important to like kind of use these phrases to craft that script. Um, and you want to make sure that you're actually super deliberate and focused. Uh, we mentioned again, two minutes is really what we're looking at. All these example videos we, we've shown you so far have been around one minute and 30 seconds, um, around two minutes tops, like I mentioned. So you want to make sure you're not rambling and droning on and on and on for about 10 minutes. You have to kind of keep that edited. And people aren't going to remember um, all the side notes that you're making. So you just have to edit it to the most important things, keep it focused. And uh, this is you know, why a script is really important. So I'm going to hand it back over to Hope. And she's going to talk to you guys about uh, Facebook and advertising, which is maybe a little bit obtuse. So uh, she's here to kind of help out. Awesome. So for most of the above examples, we've really focused on how this video will be used to engage your audience once they're already on your page. However, your video can also be used to attract more people to your page by cutting a shorter version and running it as an online commercial. There are two popular forms of online commercials. Usually people are using Facebook, uh, the Facebook video commercial, or the pre-roll advertising often run on Google AdWords. Let's look at both. <clears throat> on Facebook, the video appears in the newsfeed and on sidebars. I'm sure you've seen Facebook, uh, Facebook sponsored posts before. So they usually play without sound on, and the viewer is usually seeing it while they scroll quickly through their device. You usually only have, I would say, one to two seconds uh, to capture their attention, but Facebook considers it a view if they watch it for three. So when you're making your video specifically for Facebook, you want to take this, these things into consideration. You want to consider probably cutting the video down to 15 to 30 seconds max. Um, make sure that it includes large eye-catching titles, and if there's any dialogue, you want to make sure they're subtitled. On Facebook, you can also run your commercial on Instagram. So one of the popular things we do when we're running Instagram commercials is make them the square format so that it's uh, right in line with the way people kind of are used to digesting information on Instagram. I know it, it does vary nowadays, but it's one of the po most popular form, um, the most popular size. So by doing that, you can instantly optimize it for that platform. The same thing goes for other platforms as well. So one example of a video that shows you how to use titles um, and not the dialogue is going to be Bed of Nails. So let's watch that example. Introducing. Not that one. It's this one. Awesome. So in that example, you can see there wasn't any dialogue. It was really just comprised of really beautiful imagery and then some titles to help tell the story. So let's look at pre-roll. So pre-roll is just a little bit different. Pre-roll runs on Google AdWords, and these show up on websites all over the web. You're probably most familiar with seeing these on YouTube, but they play on most websites. For example, if you're watching a highlight clip on ESPN or maybe a cooking clip um, on a different news site, you'll often have to watch a short commercial before the clip loads. This is a pre-roll commercial. So these videos typically play with the sound on, since the viewer is getting ready to watch a video, they already have their sound on, and the viewer usually has to watch for at least five seconds. So you'll want to keep that in mind when crafting this video. Again, the goal is always to capture their attention and drive them to your campaign page to get more information. Let's watch a video for a small circle. Introducing Small Circle, Introducing small circle. the smallest, the lightest, smallest, and smartest e-bike in the world. Small Circle, the bike we've been waiting for.
So in that example, there was some dialogue in the background. We didn't have to subtitle it again because people are usually going to be watching it with their sound on. Um, so these are just some different examples of how you can optimize the video specifically for the campaign that you're going to run. So the question we always get is, which is better? And the truth is, you have to test. Um, different campaigns perform differently on different platforms and in different formats, and sometimes the smallest little tweak can make a really big difference. So we recommend testing not only, of course, Facebook and Google, but also testing various video cuts on these different platforms. Once your video is captured, it's usually pretty inexpensive to cut a couple of different versions um, so that you can do this testing and see what's going to convert the best. All right, guys, so that wraps up our webinar for today. We hope you've learned some valuable information that you can apply when making your next crowdfunding video. And of course, like Aditi shared, we'll be sharing the link to the presentation and also all of these resources so that you can easily reference them in the future. We do have a little bit of time left, so if you guys have any questions, we're happy to answer those as well. Um, and just to break down some of these resources while the questions are rolling in, um, that first thing that you're seeing is, of course, the Help Center. This is where you can just get your most basic questions answered. Right after is the Essential Guide. This is if you're really coming to crowdfunding for the first time and you'd like some tips on how this works and how to break it down and break down your time. Um, the Education Center is our newest resource. All of our previous webinars are uh, uploaded there, so you can give them a watch. Um, like I mentioned, we have some um, promotion and uh, pitch creation, which I think is also really important. And this will also be uploaded there in the next few days, along with the email that we're sending out. Um, you can also contact your customer happiness team. They're happy to give you a lot of one-on-one -on -one support, um, especially if you have any questions about how to create uh, your pitch or, or work with that. And then, of course, Lemon Light, uh, which is uh, All Hope, um, and her team, you can reach them uh, using this address. Uh, so now that we've got some questions, um, Hope, did you happen to see any, uh, any good ones? Yeah, so I saw a couple specifically related to the advertising you were just talking about. And um, one of the questions is, what are the costs associated with this kind of advertising? And the great news with pretty much all of these examples, so Facebook, Instagram, and Google AdWords, is you set your price. So you can say that you want to spend $5 a day or $500 a day, and basically these platforms spend your budget. So they charge you a different amount per view or per click. So if they charge you a dollar per click um, and you set your budget at $5 per day, you'll get five clicks to your campaign page that day. So the budget is really flexible in that regard. And there's some other various ways you can run your campaign, but um, in, for simplicity's sake, that's really the, the short answer to that question is you get to pick your budget. Let's see if there's any other questions in here. Um, there was one about, uh, this was a little bit more product focused as a webinar. I think it was Africa who mentioned this. Um, and the question was, you know, what, what to do if you have a more creative or film um, campaign. What I can do is send some examples out of, of really good um, film campaigns or creative campaigns that have had videos in the past. Some of these elements can be used again. Um, but things like team and um, secret sauce, like you mentioned, these are things that apply across the board. Um, you want to show the people that are actually behind the project. Um, that's the team section, um, what problem or what is the plot that you're solving for, um, basically what makes you uniquely capable. Um, you, I think maybe watching a few example videos is what's really going to help you figure out to approach this for yourself. But yeah, this was a little bit more product focused. You are correct. Awesome. So I see a lot of questions about the price for video. Um, so on the three examples that we ex we talked about earlier, um, the mini doc style usually ranges between 2,000 and 5,000. Um, this is general. This isn't just for our company, but this is kind of generally what we see across the board. The lifestyle is usually ranges between 5,000 and sometimes as high as 20,000 on the higher end. Um, and then the animation can start as low as 1,500 and can go as high as probably 5,000 depending on the length. Animation is typically very dependent on the length of the video since it's all done in post-production. Um, there was a question earlier about whether or not it's a good idea to include your CEO or someone that is involved in the project um, and whether or not this is important. Um, it's always nice to see the faces behind the project, um, but if your CEO maybe doesn't have a whole lot of presence or is 
awkward and maybe doesn't have a great presence with speaking, you can maybe just even show a clip of them casually working and, and do some, you know, some shots that way. Um, it's nice to have them on screen, but again, there are ways working around it um, where you might not necessarily have to have them talk. Um, so I saw a question that's basically Jesse asked, what's an emotional hook? Um, so an emotional hook is basically something that is going to create emotion. So if maybe one of the community projects on Indiegogo um, is talking about, you know, a, a cause that's worth fighting for, it could be really anything. Um, you know, that's often where you'll see emotional hooks used, where you're showing examples or, you know, very opening up with some of the, the main, the huge challenges that exist around this cause. Um, you're creating an emotional response from your audience by sharing some very powerful information that they can relate to. Uh, for everyone asking for the slides, we will be sending out uh, the recording of the webinar afterwards um, so you can give it a watch. And like I mentioned, also, we will be sending out the example videos um, so you can have them as well. So I see this is a great question. So is it okay legally and ethically to show the disadvantages of your direct competition? So we get this question a lot where our clients want to open up with how terrible their other products are. I mean, their, uh, excuse me, the products of their competitors are. So we don't recommend ever naming anyone specific. And we really always try and focus on being more general. So kind of encompassing the problems at large that, that your competitor's products may have, but not being so, so, so specific they would be able to you know, easily be named. But most importantly, focusing on the features and the highlights of your product and the solutions. Um, so always showing your product in the best light, not necessarily to, to create a, a good response, not necessarily shaming or, you know, devaluing someone else's. There was also a point about negative pitches not working well and you want to keep it positive. That's a really good point. I think having a bouncier, happier tone in the video is usually what comes across really well. Um, you don't want to focus on negatives of anyone else's product. You know, why exactly are you better is really the, the better option here. Um, and to speak a little bit to tone, um, sometimes people try and go for funny, um, and this can be nice, but I think it's really important to keep in mind that everyone's sense of humor is a little bit different. Um, so it's better just to go for just generally happy, uh, if, if specifically if this is like a product thing, obviously if you're creating a you know documentary about euthanasia, that's a little bit different. Um, but yeah, if you, if you have a product, just keep it just bouncy and light, um, kind of how you saw the tone for some of these that we showed you. Yeah, I like that too. Um, I saw a question too about the length of time you'll need uh, to make the video. Um, it can it can vary, but we usually recommend two weeks on the really low side, and then ideally, you know, four weeks. Four weeks is pretty standard, and then six weeks is if it's a pretty elaborate idea. Um, it always can be done quicker, but usually you'll have to pay a little bit more if you know you have a one week turnaround from start to finish, for example. Um, I think there's a question from Ochir. Um, as far as uh, an advisory service uh, about uh, presenting us the video and then getting a review of it, uh, we don't have a formal process like this. But if you contact our customer happiness team, um, which is this link over here, um, and you just let them know, I have this video. Do you have any opinions on it? I have this pitch. Do you have any opinions on it? Um, our team is happy to step in with some, some ideas um, and, and kind of let you know. Um, Um, so I'm seeing some uh, questions about an experience video. Um, we have, we've made over 5,000 videos in the last three years, so we have tons of ex experience-based videos. If you guys want to reach out afterwards, um, I'm happy to send you some more specific examples to, you know, whatever service or product that you might have in mind. Um, chances are we have a pretty similar example. And you can see how, you know, we've approached different, you know, different scenarios and different ways and how we bring each of those to life. Because yes, products are 
uh, one very specific kind of video, but experiences or services or community projects are very different. So happy to show you some more examples of those. And yes, uh, one of the ways to get pre-roll, to, to run a pre-roll ad is through AdWords, Google AdWords, Julia. And we recommend running the video both before and definitely during your campaign. The, I'm sorry, the uh, commercial, the online commercial, as Eric asked about. Um, Bartos, I think I'm a little bit confused about your question. If there's any way that you can rephrase that, um, that might be a little helpful so we can go ahead and get that answered as well. Um, if, if you're referring to like within the category on YouTube itself, um, a lot of that is, you know, just like within their algorithm, uh, how much visibility you're getting, how much traffic you're driving to that um, to that video. Getting it trending is, of course, like an entirely different uh, set of information. So that that really does kind of depend. Uh, do you show your video productions to a control group before the release? Um, we definitely always recommend showing it to, uh, of course, your friends and family and your team, but also, yeah, maybe to some, a small group of customers to get some feedback as well. Um, so the kind of video to fund R&D. So we have done this a lot. It usually features, it's very heavily focused on the founder. Um, and the team, and usually you can basically show them kind of through the idea creation. So you can do really beautiful examples of them, uh, depending on, I don't know if you, depending on like what the R&D is, if it's a product, you know, sketching out the, uh, the, the drawings of it, or maybe on a computer looking at the, the rendering, stuff like that. There's a lot of ways to kind of get creative if the product isn't in existence. It's definitely a little bit harder and it can be a little bit more expensive just because you have to create kind of everything around it. Um, but that's not always necessarily the case. And if you'd like to reach out afterwards, I can send you a lot of examples in that same uh, kind of category. People who are trying to raise money without the product being complete yet. Um, Your Majesty had a question about how, um, how come you don't uh, often see pricing in videos. Um, this really depends. I, see, I do see pricing in some videos. Um, I think maybe the reason you don't always see it is because uh, product pricing can change between the production of the video and when you launch your campaign. Also, what happens is pricing is a little bit dynamic throughout the campaign. So you'll see someone start with an early bird price of, you know, perhaps like $150, and then as the campaign goes on, it'll end up increasing to maybe $250. And then the MSRP for when the product is live um, and no longer running a crowdfunding campaign is like $350. So I think maybe just giving yourself that flexibility of pricing um, is, is probably why you don't see a whole lot of uh, uh, pro product pricing in the video itself. You want to be able to use this video over and over again um, since you know it can be a little bit expensive to produce in the first place. Um, we do not have a German-speaking Indiegogo consultant, unfortunately, um, but if you reach out to our happiness team, um, we will do our best. Um. Is it important to have the campaign title on your video? I'm not, uh, not necessarily, but I think it would naturally make sense there. Um, I think maybe if you're considering for SEO purposes, I'm not sure why, I'm not, I'm not really sure I understand the question, but as far as having your campaign title on the video, it should probably be at least in the description um, of your video if it's on YouTube or Vimeo. So complete and educational videos.
C.W. Lewis, um, that's a pretty uh, sensitive topic. Um, so Minidoc may work well if you have experts to discuss the uh, situation and, and offer solutions. Um, that's probably, probably you would want to get, share some more information with, you know, specifically your video provider to see what makes the most sense for you. Um, yeah. Um, Pascal, we don't have a number. Um, uh, we work primarily over um, email. So using that link mentioned over here, the contact customer happiness team, you can file a ticket and we'll get back to you usually within 24 hours unless, of course, there's like a holiday going on. Um, but yeah, we are pretty responsive there. Um, and there is a question over here about uh, pricing for a product that is too high to be successful. Um, this doesn't really have a lot to do with videos, but just want to answer it really quickly. Uh, that depends, you know, on uh, what what it is that you're creating a product for. So there are some things like e-bikes, which are over a thousand dollars, and we see those um, have been really su successful in the past. Um, but if you're selling a one thousand dollar water bottle, you know, this is maybe a little too pricey. So it, it just really depends on the product that you're selling. And I would really take a look at um, similar products or things that are in your um, uh, category to see what the pricing model looks like there. Um, there are some questions about promotions and how much to spend on that. Um, that's a pretty involved question and I would really recommend uh, actually watching our webinar that we hosted previously on promotions. It's available on that education center. Um, and we kind of go in depth into that there. That's like an hour long webinar. So you might want to give that one a watch in order to get some of those answers. And I think we've got just a little bit of time left. So maybe we can go ahead and answer one more question. Um, uh, Ken, just to answer your question about videographers around the country, we have a team of around 200 videographers that we work with on a regular basis and that we've trained and staffed and, uh, again, constantly get feedback to and, and work with on, on a daily, weekly basis. Um, if there is somewhere that is that we need to film that we don't have someone, rather than hiring someone new, we're much more likely to, fil to fly or to have someone travel there to shoot that production. Um, it would have to be a pretty remote place, though, because we have a pretty well-rounded team. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. Um, and apologies for any of the uh, technical difficulties we had. Sorry for coming at you from two different coasts. And so it can be a little bit difficult to coordinate. But um, thank you for your patience. And thank you for all these wonderful questions. Um, like I mentioned, here are different ways that you can reach out to us. Um, and you know, we look forward to hearing from you guys. Um, I will be sending this out as uh, a follow-up email along with uh, some of the links that we mentioned. Um, and you know, feel free to reach out if there's anything else. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Thanks.